Uh, okay. <clears throat> Collections. We're talking about collections and about, uh, first of all, about separation of interfaces and implementations. So map is a thing that, uh, which is also called dictionary, is a thing that is able to uh, get something by a key and put, uh, and put something, some value associated by key. Uh, it's a parameterized interface. In uh, UML notation, it's uh, shown like this. So key and V, are actual type parameters of map interface. And uh, uh, there are different implementations of this interface uh, suitable for different needs, like hash map, the, the most common, commonly used one, like linked hash map, identity hash map, concurrent skip list map, which is a, a map uh, that, uh, that can be used uh, in multi-threaded environment. And also we have an um, extension to map interface called navigable map. And what is, what is navigable map? N navigable map, when we um, say that something is a navigable map, we say that we can, the usual, for the usual map, if we know the key, for example, I don't know, uh, the item number, item code, we can extract the actual item, its name, its price, its whatever, its description using item code. So the item code is one, two, three, four, five. So getting uh, this item number one, two, three, four, five, we get all the information. We retrieve all the information. What is navigable map? Navigable map is about uh, the case when we know the key only approximately. Uh, say we have a weight or price of an items and this uh, all, all the items have different prices say and uh, we say okay let's uh, let's find something uh, whose price is close to 10 euros so navigable map is about uh, about this so it will find the closest uh, uh, the, the item which uh, whose price is closest to 10 euros there might be, if it's uh, equals 10 euros, then it will obtain the, uh, the item with this such price. If it's uh, no such item with this price 10 euros, but uh, there is item that costs 9.99, then it will get this 9.99 uh, item, still because it's close to 10 euros. It's not navigable map. And of course, uh, not uh, all, the, all the maps are navigable maps. Uh, you see that tree map is actually a map and navigable map, uh, but hash map, it's just map, not navigable one. Uh, so we have interfaces and we have implementations. Another, uh, another thing uh, is uh, collection, so-called collection interfaces, because maps are just separate, uh, just separate, uh, don't know, division, subdivision of uh, collections API, uh, but we also, in Java, we also have collection interfaces on top of it, uh, is iterable interface and it's as its name suggests it's something that we can iterate through so it's something that consists of elements and we can iterate we can enumerate all these elements we can just uh, uh, process one after another then goes collection and then uh, there are also lots of interfaces like list like set like queue what's the difference between list and set uh, do you do you know uh, already know the difference between list and set who knows? Arthur, maybe you know the difference. Or oh, Vlad, Vlad is always always speaking. So let's give uh, other folks <laughs> try. Yeah, at least, like uh, I remember, at least is something sorted, and uh, it can duplicate element, and the set is unsorted like sequence, and it like doesn't duplicate elements. Yeah, okay, correct. Uh, and and uh, and and uh, something about position uh, in set you cannot access position or, or or something like that. Yeah, yeah. In set you just uh, uh, don't have positions for elements. Set is just uh, 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 like array, flag. like array without indexes. Like yeah, something. yeah, yeah. And uh, in set elements are not duplicated, so it's close to a mathematical set notion of set if you studied some set, set theory then you already know what set is it's just deduplicated elements without any order and without any index of course so uh, in list we have order we have index uh, so it's close to array uh, it's our, but set is something completely different and q uh, q is q 
Q is a thing that we can push from one uh, side and we can just pop uh, elements from the other side. And that's it about Q. And the deck, uh, deck is a Q, two-sided Q. You can push, push from one side and from, pop from the other side. You can push to the other side and pop, 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 pop from the left side. So it's a uh, uh, deck is a uh, double directed uh, Q, actually. Okay, all right. And uh, if uh, and talking about uh, the very top of this uh, hierarchy, uh, iterable, iterable is something that can participate in for loop. Remember the for loop, uh, it's uh, the very, very basic thing that you, you must know. It, it's, like immu it's like immutable to loop. Uh, it's not immutable to, uh, uh, you mean, uh, it's something like, like, that can be read in, in, in mute, that you can read in a loop. Uh, look, like, you, you know, like in Excel, you, uh, like you, you, I'm pretty sure you are well known with Excel. Yeah. So <laughs> when you want, when you want like to multiply a, a sequence of uh, this uh, sequ sequence of numbers, you just choose one, uh, one number and you put dollar before it and after it. And it's like, if through the loop, it doesn't change. And mm -hmm. uh, here it is like 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 that. It's like some. No no some... no 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 no. I I know the dollar stuff in uh, Excel, but I can't see a uh, analogy here. It's like uh, if we have uh, iterable interface, it just means that you can use this uh, uh, simple syntax to iterate through through its element. If uh, you have collection, it might be list, set, or anything else. Uh, they all implement iterable in the end. So if you have uh, any collection, uh, you can use it uh, in uh, this uh, short form of loop. For uh, This can be read as for each element of collection, do this, do something. So you just can iterable is something you can iterate through. Uh, you have list iterator that can do something more for list, but uh, let's uh, let's skip it. Uh, we also have maps. I already discussed that we have actually uh, three types of maps: uh, uh, map, sorted map, and navigable map. And uh, also, it's important to understand how we compare compare things in Java. Uh, the, the part of uh, uh, collections API is a uh, comparable and comparator uh, interfaces. Uh, first of all, if uh, if we we are going to define uh, a class uh, whose elements are going to be comparable, uh, then we might want to implement comparable interface for this class. So if uh, we are defining something like a uh, class, uh, class of uh, items, and we are going to compare items by, I don't know, by, by the points given in user reviews. So this item is superior, is bigger than this item because it's five stars, and uh, that item is only 3.5 stars. Then, okay, it, it, item A is bigger than a, item B. So, but we need uh, we need some uh, algorithm to compare, and we need some uh, interface to show that uh, uh, items are comparable with each other. So we are implementing comparable interface, and this uh, will force us to implement this compare to method. This compare to method, uh, we are just uh, returning some integer value, and uh, uh, what. Uh, uh, what matters here is only a sign of this integer. Uh, usually uh, compared to returns integer, it can be any integer, but uh, what actually matters for the sake of sorting, for the sake of searching is sign of this integer. If it's a negative integer, zero or positive integer, right? If it's less than, equal to, or greater than the specified object. So if actually O equals to, uh, to this, then we should return uh, we should return zero here. Uh, okay, but uh, not uh, always. Uh, not always we have a possibility to add interfaces to to classes. We just have classes, and we need to compare them just for, for the sake of sorting. For example, we need uh, we have a, a class person, 
and uh, say we don't have access to, to its source code, its library class, but we need to sort persons by, by their given names, for example. Uh, then we might uh, uh, create a class called comparator for person, person comparator. And this class must uh, implement interface uh, comparator and uh, uh, this comparator should uh, have a method called compare. And uh, this method accepts two, two arguments because uh, we need to compare two, two objects. Um, okay, so uh, that, that was a brief introduction to interfaces of, uh, uh, of uh, collections API. Uh, so uh, when to use, you might ask, and uh, novice developers, junior developers, they often uh, mess with these things. Where should I use uh, uh, interface and where should I use uh, implementation type? For example, uh, the, most common, uh, the most common example, we have a, a list interface and we have array list implementation. Where should I uh, use a list type? Where should I put list type in my code? And where should I put array list uh, type in my code? So the rule of thumb is following. Use interfaces for variable types and method arguments so that you don't tie to specific implementation. So uh, if you need just list as a method argument, uh, please don't put uh, array list as method argument because you are not using the fact that you are accepting array list. You're just using it as list. So please make it as wide as possible. But when you are returning something, it's just uh, uh, good practice uh, to say to be more uh, more specific. If you are uh, writing method that's going to return some that's actually returning array list. You just uh, be kind to, to your user to, to tell them that what I'm returning is actually ready. Why it uh, makes sense? Because uh, uh, usually, uh, but, but you may ask, okay, uh, uh, I'm writing such method that, uh, I don't know, it's quite an often mistake, by the way. I see it quite often. I see some uh, void uh, uh, do something array list of string uh, argument. And then here, blah, 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 you do something. Like I would tell that uh, please try to use list here. Why? Because, uh, and, and you, may, you may, might argue why I'm all, always using array list in my code because array list is very commonly used uh, class. Really, very commonly. If, uh, if it's list in 99% uh, of cases, it will be array list. Why not use array list as an argument? Because uh, you have other, still you have other list implementations that you uh, might want to use. For example, you might uh, call it like do something and uh, in uh, Java 11 uh, or Java 9, it's a very convenient uh, thing like, uh, uh, like this. Actually, this is not an array list. It's a list. I don't know which implementation actually. But uh, if you are using uh, array list as a type argument here, the code won't compile. The same with uh, collections uh, empty list. Just empty list. It's not an array list. And again, this code won't compile, but this code, this one, will compile because you are accepting lists, not array lists. It doesn't matter for you. It doesn't matter for you to for it to be an array list. So uh, use interfaces uh, for variable types and method arguments. Uh, this is a intermediate conclusion. And you have uh, some um, uh, some convenience uh, methods. Uh, to produce uh, to produce static to produce uh, immutable elements of uh, collections API. Say uh, as I told you before, we have immutable empty list set and map like this, and this is quite uh, this works really fast because they are singleton elements. They don't create. Uh, of course, if you need an empty uh, empty element, you may produce it like uh, new array. Uh, list of uh, string and 
and this is going to be an empty list. But if you are going to only read these values, uh, it's way uh, more better. Uh, it's way better practice to use uh, collections empty list uh, because uh, this is going to just work faster, and uh, this is this will consume less memory because it's just a single object that's re being reused every everywhere where you need an immutable empty list. And the same for a singleton list. Uh, we all uh, we often uh, need uh, just a list of one element or just a map of one element or just a set of one element. So we also have convenience method for this. Uh, starting from Java 9, we have uh, uh, these uh, great, uh, great things. Uh, if you have A, B, C, or whatever, you can construct easily construct a list of these elements or set of these elements uh, using, uh, using these convenience methods. And uh, also, you can construct map map of uh, uh, I don't know two or three k value pair pairs on, uh, uh, using map of. So please know about this and use them. And actually, uh, people are using them quite often. So and now they less tend to to uh, this mistake because uh, uh, before invention of uh, list of. Uh, people uh, tend to use uh, array list everywhere, but now uh, now you are less tend to make this mistake and put array list instead of list as a method attribute. Okay, I think this is clear. And uh, also, we can use uh, we can create surrogate collections, a collection from from a collection. Uh, for example, if we have a list. Uh, you now understand what this means. This question mark it stands T. <laughs> uh, we can create an unmodifiable list out of a possibly modifiable list. Say if we have array list and array list is something that uh, you can add elements to or delete or just clear, just remove all the elements, and you don't want to. Um, uh, and this list is your internal state of your object, and you don't want to allow other programmers, other users to modify your internal state uh, by uh, exposing your internal state to uh, via, I don't know, public uh, public property to others. But you can always, always wrap your modifiable list to an unmodifiable one using collections and modifiable list so that other people will get your list. But if they will try to add an element to it, they will get an exception instead of actually adding element to it. So uh, this is sort of you or sort of roper, roper method that produces one list out of other list. And here, here we have a, a tricky point that you might think that why in Java we don't have a separate interfaces for modifiable collections and unmodifiable collections. Because uh, it's uh, really, uh, really useful uh, to have, uh, uh, say, interface unmodifiable list. And we know that we can get elements from this list, right? But we cannot delete, add, delete, remove, uh, clear elements of this list, just uh, maybe resort them. We can, just cannot do this. And uh, maybe uh, as a more narrow class should be modifiable list. That's how uh, Java language designers decided to do. And uh, it was a, a decision made on possibilities of uh, generics implementation in Java. And this is uh, what we have to deal with. We have list and actually we, at compile time, we don't know if it's modifiable list or if it's immutable list. So we can only try to add an element and get runtime exception. So this is maybe not the best solution, but uh, of course it was justified by some reasons and uh, uh, we have what we have in Java. In Kotlin, I always compare Java to Kotlin and uh, uh, Kotlin is superior in many th places. In Kotlin, we do have separate, uh, uh, separate hierarchy for uh, modifiable and unmodifiable collections so that in compile time, we understand that we cannot uh, just add, we just don't have methods at the level of immutable list, we just don't have a, a methods to add or remove elements. But it, 
it's possible only because uh, Kotlin generics are extension of uh, Java generics. Okay, uh, array list the great <laughs> looks like a name of some Russian Tsar, and this is because. This is because of some, I don't know, emperor. It, it's because it's really emperor because uh, you, uh, it rules all your code. You uh, always using array list everywhere in your Java code. And uh, here's an, its internal representation. And let me, let me just show it uh, in runtime uh, using lightweight Java visualizer. Do I have a... Uh, do I have a demo for it? Oh. Find it. And we have a list here. Oh, let's just, oh, linked list, no list here. Okay, let, believe me. Uh, if I put uh, this to lightweight Java visualizer, I will get this uh, this result. If I uh, uh, create list and uh, add uh, three elements to, to them, you will have uh, an an object uh, and uh, sort of header object, and uh, uh, it holds size that uh, it, we have actually only three elements in this list, and we have uh, array under the hood, we have an just plain array. And uh, uh, here they are, the three elements of array list. And we have this null, 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 null values. And we are using these values for adding new ones. If we add the new element here, it will go instead of this null, and then this null, and then this, this null. And what happens uh, when we just uh, filled out all the array? It will allocate a new array maybe a longer, uh, longer than this one, uh, and it will copy all the elements from this array to to the new array, and then it will proceed with adding elements. So this is how it works, and you see that it works uh, uh, not maybe not very uh, uh, not very quick when we're adding lots of elements right to this array because sometimes from time to time it has to reallocate everything. Uh, so algorithmic properties of array list are as following. Uh, is following. I expect you to understand this. Or you, <laughs> a big O notation. If uh, nobody explained it to you, please get get yourself familiar with big O notation because it's uh, your main instrument as a programmer, as a professional programmer. You you must know what big O notation is. And uh, 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 so, what algorithmic properties of array list? Uh, uh, big O one is the main benefit of array list. Uh, if we are going to get element by its index, say get first element, uh, then uh, it's we are going to get it at constant time. Uh, so constant time is big O of one. Uh, if we are adding an element to the end of the list, uh, in many cases, it's also going to be constant time because we are just utilizing the vac vacant space here. But sometimes in worst case scenario, we'll have to reallocate the new buffer. We have to copy. So from time to time, adding to array list is a very, very slow operation. And uh, uh, also what is a slow operation is adding an element somewhere in between because we need to shift all the elements to the right if we want to insert somewhere in between. Uh, the same for deletion. So insertion and deletions are not the strongest part of a release, of course. Uh, we have another, another thing called linked list and this one, for this one, I think I have, uh, I have uh, demo then I, I can actually run it here so uh, what do we have we have uh, added a uh, new linked list we created new linked list and uh, we we cast it to queue because linked list uh, implement queue interface here and uh, let it be a queue mm -hmm. of integer and let's add uh, four elements to this queue and let's visualize it uh, what do uh, what do we see here we see a uh, the thing that's called linked list, let it be top from button. Okay, so 
uh, what's essentially linked is it's just chain of elements. So in the head, we have li linked list itself. Uh, it has reference to first element. Then it, uh, first element has reference to second element and second elements has backwards reference to the first. And the second has reference to next element, next, next, next. Uh, do you already, did you already uh, study uh, algorithms and uh, data structures? Who knows yeah. about linked list? Yeah, we, we, we were like studying like binary tree and uh, the uh, like one topic was, uh, it was topic like it's really, really matters where you start because if you start like from what number do you choose? Because if you start from like the last one, like from the fourth, yeah, uh -huh. how we see, then you instead of like binary tree, you will get uh, like link the list with uh, uh, like in, instead of like cool alg sorted like in kind of sorted algorithm you will get just like linked the list and we ask like what is linked list and, and we got response like you like always get uh, it's like neighbors like everyone's have uh, neighbors and they can reference to them like somehow uh, i see i see i see i see okay okay there are lots of things for you to study actually at minor uh, maybe <laughs> by yourself because yeah uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, wish yeah, you, yeah, could, yeah. you had yeah you had maybe deeper but uh, deeper courses on algorithm and uh, data structures but we have what we have uh, yes, linked list. Now, now your second uh, <laughs> second time when you meet li linked list uh, term, and uh, now you see it visualized at least. Uh, so this is just a chain of elements, and uh, what's uh, good and what's bad about this chain of elements? Uh, as you can see, it's quite easy to insert an element in somewhere in between. If you have an array of elements. And you want to insert an element in the in the middle of this uh, array, right? Uh, you have to move everything one after another to uh, on this uh, array. So you will uh, uh, the complexity is O or big O of n. So if you have worst case scenario, you will have to move all the array uh, to one position, right, to insert uh, the element at the beginning of this array. Uh, it's very easy to insert uh, element in the beginning of linked list, in the end of linked list, or everywhere in linked list. You just uh, break this chain, you just insert this element, and you just restore restore uh, the references. So it's actually it's a good uh, actually it's a good uh, task uh, for a beginner programmer. Please implement your own linked list. Implement your own linked list, and it's good practical task uh, to implement insertion, deletion, and uh, traversal through elements. So this is how a linked list uh, in Java looks like. Uh, but uh, what do we have uh, uh, in practical terms? Uh, in practical terms, oh sorry, uh, F11. Uh, in theoretical terms, here are algorithmic properties of linked list. So uh, getting element by index is a slow operation because we have to walk through all the elements one after another. Get me first, second, third, fourth. Okay, here's the first fourth element. Unlike array list, where we're just getting fourth element straight away, we are knowing where it, uh, where, where it lies, so we can just get it in constant time. In linked list, you cannot get element by index uh, quickly. Uh, but we can quickly add elements, we can quickly uh, insert and remove elements somewhere in the middle of the list. So actually, maybe it's not that bad for practical usage, you might think, because theoretical algorithmic properties of linked list are not that bad. But actually, you never use linked list. Uh, remember, in the very, very beginning, uh, what did the... What did uh, Tagir Valev told us? And forget about linked list, right? And another tweet for you from another knowing person. Uh, sorry, uh, where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Uh, it's Josh Bloch. Josh Bloch is actually uh, actually an author of uh, standard Java creator. library. Yeah. yeah, creator. And see what it's writing. Does anyone actually use linked list? And uh, these are also, also uh, quite known folks in Java community. I wrote it and I never use it. <laughs> and why Josh Bloch uh, doesn't use linked list and why you 
also shouldn't choose shouldn't use it in real life it's it's inefficient it's inefficient yes it's inefficient but not in uh, terms of uh, big o adding yeah but but when you like like you said adding like is very 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 um, interest like easy way yeah but uh, how about like getting like why do i need this if like getting for me something is uh, 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 more pain rather than adding like it's much better uh, you are wrong Vlad. you are wrong you are thinking wrong because uh, in most cases you are not accessing elements of list by its index in most casing you're just in most cases you're just uh, using this for for each element in this list do something and one by one traversal in linked list is very efficient you're getting this then move on to this then move on to this then move on to this yes give me the third element is an inefficient operation right give me third element it's an inefficient we have to but in real life people usually don't do this yes they like don't uh, get by like third or first one or yes in real life they usually don't do this in real life oh, okay now, usually... now this, this this makes like more sense okay yeah yeah in real life yes people usually use just simple traversal using four and it should be effective but uh to understand why uh uh josh bloch, no one loses yeah <laughs> no josh, one loses <laughs> uh, jo jo josh bloch uh, the, 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 the doesn't use this you have to dig uh, a bit deeper can you hear me and see me because uh, I, uh, you 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 made a good decision by turning off your camera because uh, we actually had like good connection but i don't know why did you decide to no 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 i just uh, it just fell off i think it just uh, Maybe USB USB uh, wire fell out of, uh, of that slot. Okay, uh, so to, in order to understand uh, to understand why uh, uh, why this list why this is actually a bad one, we have to understand uh, the memory overhead actually, uh, because each node here is actually a wrapper for another. Uh, for another node. Here we uh, we use foo and bar as values of a node, but actually they are not foo and bar values. Actually, they are strings. So uh, it, this is just uh, uh, used for for the sake of uh, clarity of diagram. But if we are going to visualize it in full, uh, for example, uh, here if I just uh, uh, set as primitive integer class. So uh, if I run it uh, once again. Let's look at this. Uh, let, let's look at this uh, linked list. Uh, see this uh, one, two, three, four. But if I turn off this option and uh, see the, the real, the full picture, uh, what uh, we will see is like this. Oh, I see my external camera just broken. So I'm using just built-in camera in my... So, this is the real picture for for linked list see what's different that actually nodes are just ropers and they have references to uh real uh, real objects that are in this uh, uh list uh, that are in this list and uh, what's worse here integer is another roper uh, uh so there's another uh, reference to real value of of one or two or three so, so we produce a lot of memory overhead with link list. So this so, is why it's inefficient. Uh, uh, like I like no no I googled about the overheading and the, the problem is like it uses more uh, more uh, memory than like uh, instances created. Yeah. So like instead of like for one or two, it looks like it used like three because the uh, element itself, the previous reference and like next reference. So this- Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand, yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. I just uh, uh, I just uh, changed it to, to array list and see what we have here. We have very compact uh, data because we have actual array and this array has actual links and no, uh, no memory is wasted for previews for next because uh, all the errors are actually uh, um, actually fields of the object so they also take memory but what's worse uh, here and uh, another another reason why array list is more efficient than linked list uh, 
Here, uh, in the heart of array list, we have array, and uh, all uh, all the elements are located uh, close to each other in memory. And this is why modern processor architecture can utilize caches of memory. Uh, in memory caching, a uh, processor just maps uh, some uh, uh, some part of the memory uh, to internal cache, which is much quicker, uh, works much quicker than random access uh, memory uh, on your motherboard or of your computer. So when uh, uh, data that we are going to process is located uh, locally, it's uh, so all the elements are close to the, each other, it's uh, uh, more probable that they will uh, be on the same page in the same cache uh, so that uh, processor might take advantage of processing them. If we are, uh, if we take a look at this picture, at the picture of uh, linked list, this one, uh, these elements, these objects, all these objects, they are created independently on heap, and we don't know where they are going to to be located in heap memory, and it's uh, probable that uh, they won't fit on one page uh, on one cache page so that uh, processor while uh, doing uh, while processing them it will have to to go to to random access memory on your motherboard and it will be slower so data locality matters when we speak about efficiency of data structures and uh, in Java, it also works. So you must understand this. And uh, it's just a brief, brief introduction into data structures and its efficiency, actually. OK, uh, so that's the previous one. So it, this was about linked list. So please don't uh, avoid using linked list. There are no reasons to, to use linked list in Java, actually. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, if you still need DEC, for example, if you still need uh, uh, if you still need uh, queue, uh, you might argue that in but with linked list it's uh, very convenient to use linked list as queue, right? Because uh, with linked list you can easily add uh, an element to to the end. And you can easily uh, remove element uh, from from head, add it to tail, remove from head, add to tail, remove from head, and uh, uh, it doesn't take much time. If you are going to implement uh, queue on base of array list, it will take you lots of time because each time when you are pulling head, you have to move elements from one by one, right, to fill this gap. Understand, right? So you might argue, okay, a linked list as a, as a normal list, I will reuse array list. But how about using a linked list as queue? But answer is, don't use linked list as queue because you have a better implementation. And let me find uh, the slide from another presentation. That's LGV talk, and this is about uh, uh, deck. Array deck. So array deck is another implementation of uh, uh, deck in uh, Java, and it's based on array, as you can see. But it works the following way: if you uh, say add three elements here, it works as uh, completely like uh, uh, just plain array list. It just utilizes this buffer until it's full, and when it's uh, full, it just reallocates the buffer. Uh, but if we pulling elements, you see uh, it doesn't try to to shift this uh, third element uh, to the left. It just sets puts null here. But it also have uh, uh, this variable called uh, head and tail, and now it just tells us that head is shifted to number three. So pulling array deck is quick operation. If we are adding more elements to array deck later, it just adds it to to the end. Of the buffer, and when we the buffer uh, uh, we use up all the elements at the end of the buffer, it will start uh, adding them in the beginning of the buffer. So it's a sort of circular array. If you are using this uh, queue in a situation where 
uh, you are just with the same speed, you are adding and removing elements with the same speed. So you don't need to, exp uh, to uh, extend your buffer. Uh, you can use, you can utilize the buffer of a fixed size uh, for, for this array and it will uh, work lightning fast because it's array based operation. All the operations are made at constant time. And uh, we also uh, uh, taking advantage from data locality because it's uh, on, on the same array because uh, data, um, uh, uh, the neighbor elements, uh, they are located nearby each other. So most likely they will be on the same page cache of uh, CPU. So it will be lightning fast actually. So use array deck for, for Q, for Q, for stack, for, uh, for queuing in Java. Okay, let's back to let's get back to our lecture. Uh, so this is a rate deck. Okay, another another emperor of Java <laughs> programming is hash map. Hash map the great because uh, uh, three most commonly used standard classes in Java: string, array list, and hash map. Hash map is a dictionary, and you. Uh, you are using dictionary uh, uh, dictionaries often in your Java code, and uh, the most uh, oftenly used implementation of map in Java is hash map. And uh, uh, I think you should have learned this at uh, your uh, algorithm and data structures classes. If you haven't, uh, then please read Wikipedia. Uh, please uh, get yourself familiar with how hash map works. Uh, just a quick overview. Ato, do, do, do you want to, to say something? Because I see you unmuted. No? Okay. Uh, so uh, how it works, uh, how it works. Uh, this uh, map or this dictionary, it's in quite a tricky way, actually. Uh, uh, we want a, a, a structure that we can put some key values. So some values uh, associated with keys, say uh, foo to one, bar to two, bus to three. So how it works? We, uh, we are using array. You know that it's uh, quite desirable to use array as a backend for, for any data structure when we can use array that will be fast. I, I think you already understood this. So uh, HashMap utilizes array. And uh, how it works actually, if we are putting foo associated with one to this map, it uh, calculates hash of foo value and hash is uh, just some deterministically uh, uh, calculated integer value based on internal state of the object. So we have this foo string, we calculate do some magic calculations and we get uh, some number. And then we have uh, this array and this array is of uh, say 16 elements. So we just uh, divide this number by 16, get the remainder. And the remainder of this division will be an index where we should put this value, say foo, bar, and bus. And now if we want to find element bar in our data structure, we are not doing it like this, Oh, let's, uh, uh, let's enumerate and find one after another and find the, uh, the, correct, uh, the correct result. No, we are doing this quickly. We also compute, uh, compute this hash. We also calculate the index of the array and we are getting it straight away, lightning fast. So we are getting uh, elements out of hash map at constant time. And this is how it works and this is how it, why it works fast. But the problem with hash, hash map uh, is hash map collisions. Of course, uh, we cannot guarantee that for different strings, the result of hash will be different. Just because uh, there are more strings in this world than integers, than 32-bit integers. It's just, uh, just logic, simple logic. Like, uh, right, so uh, there are uh, things that are called uh, hash collisions. And of course, there are more uh, different uh, possible strings than uh, elements in this array. So uh, there might occur hash collisions and these are actually hash collisions. Uh, uh, so what happens with uh, Java hash map? So if you 
uh, just open uh, Wikipedia article on hash maps, you will uh, read that there are uh, different possible ways to treat hash collision, collisions. And the, uh, the one that's chosen for hash map in Java is just one of the possible ways. That's called chaining. And what we do here is, okay, uh, we put uh, this value, uh, this value here with this key, and then we put another value and it's uh, on the same bucket, as we say. So it has the same uh, element, it must occupy the same element of the array. And uh, uh, what we are doing here, it's okay, just uh, let's just create a small, tiny linked list here. Just attach it. And uh, uh, when we are going to search for some value, first we are figuring out the bucket where we are going to, to get this value. And then let's uh, look elements of this tiny linked list one after another to find the correct one. So, uh, why is this going to work? And that's because uh, hash value is a random value. And uh, in good situation, uh, all the elements here are going to be randomly uh, dispersed, uh, randomly uh, assigned to, to all the buckets. So that these uh, linked lists are going to be small, are going to be short. And this is actually how uh, hash map in Java works or intended to work. Unfortunately, uh, there are bad people called hackers and they uh, look for ways to spoil things. So uh, actually in, uh, in Java, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, set up, uh, we can produce uh, strings that have uh, the same hash value we, because uh, uh, the algorithm of uh, calculating string hash, uh, string hash is uh, quite simple. Uh, we can uh, introduce an algorithm that can produce many, many strings with the same hash value. And let's, let us see what happens if we put uh, many multiple strings in, uh, with the same hash value in, on hash map. Just let me let me show you it, show it to you. So let it be like this. Oops. Uh, let's run this and see what happens. It's going to be six collisions. So this is real code. So these are real strings and real hash map, and we're just visualizing what really happens under the hood in Java. So. Uh, this strange thing, uh, strange string C A A A A A B B A B B A. So uh, these are not just random strings. These strings are produced by tricky algorithm, and uh, all this. Uh, I hope you see see it well. Maybe I just make it bigger. Uh, all the strings uh, have the same hash value. See, so all the strings, all the strings, uh, on a poor hash map they all fell into one bucket. So we are, we are having long linked list here. So what's, what's going to happen if I'm going to ask this hash map, please bring me the value for, for the KAABBBB. It's going to look through all these linked list and it's going to be slow. And this is a, this is a security vulnerability actually because uh, uh, what uh, what people <laughs> invented is uh, when you have a possibility to to create some strings and you know that these strings are going to be stored on uh, hash map and Java applications, then you can create such uh, malicious strings, lots of these malicious strings, and you can actually convert your efficient hash map to an inefficient linked list, and you can create a denial of service attack on, on Java machine. You actually, you can't now because uh, it's fixed, but before some version of Java, there was uh, such vulnerability. But it uh, explains what happens uh, if we add uh, the really, really big number of collisions, say 11. Let's, uh, let's look how uh, Java cache map is going to look like in this case. Well, come on, in this scenario, it's going to look like this. 
Can you see it? It's not a linked list anymore. What do you see here? Vlad, you know, you must know. You told me that, uh, that you already uh, learned this. It's a tree. It's binary search tree, actually. See, instead of adding uh, one after another, after another, after another in this linked list, uh, at uh, some stage, uh, Java implementation of hash map decided enough is enough. We see that something strange happening here. So let's not do, uh, let's not uh, utilize linked list here. Let's utilize uh, another, uh, another data structure called uh, red black tree. And actually in red black tree, you can find a value in logarithmic type, uh, time because uh, it's a binary search tree. You, if you are looking for something and at each iteration, you are deciding which branch of the tree to choose. So uh, the tree might be huge, but you always have a small number of uh, transitions from one element to another to find the correct one. But of course, you need to understand what binary tree is. Uh, and uh, I will cover this later. But uh, yes, this is how, how hash map works. I'm telling this uh, to you because uh, uh, many people during job interviews love to ask junior programmers about what do you know about hash map, about hash map internals. So it's uh, it's uh, good if you know about how hash map works, and it's great if you know about uh, treeification uh, in case of uh, m multiple collisions. I, I think you your job interviewer will be impressed if you tell them about it. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's close this. Uh, uh, we also have uh, more variations on uh, hash map theme. Uh, we have uh, linked hash map, and uh, linked hash map is uh, uh, as you see in hash map, we don't have any particular uh, ordering of the elements, as in hash set. By the way. Hash set is a uh, like hash map without values. Now you can you can understand why because uh, hashes are random values and uh, uh, we just insert them and uh, they are inserted in completely random order. Sometimes we need to to preserve this order and in this case we can utilize linked hash map and this is a just combination of linked list and hash map. We are using hash map. To, to store values, to retrieve values by keys, but we are using linked list uh, in order to preserve order of elements. Of course, there is a memory overhead, but if we need to preserve uh, order of elements in the hash map, then we, then we can use linked hash map. Uh, tree map. Uh, so map, uh, hash maps are implementations of map interface. But sometimes we need navigable map. Uh, what I told you in the beginning, right? When we don't know the actual key, but we want to find uh, the closest value with the closest key. So hash map doesn't work in this scenario because for hash map, we need to know the exact key value. If we don't know exact key value, we need to use another, another approaches. Uh, for example, tree-based, uh, mm, tree-based algorithm, tree-based data structure. And uh, this is called, uh, uh, in Java, it's tree map. It's uh, what is called uh, a red black tree. And let me, let me show it to you. Do I have tree map? Yeah, I do. So let me run this. Okay. Yeah, you see, this is tree. And uh, some of its uh, nodes are red and some of its nodes are black. And uh, mm, unfortunately, I don't have time to explain to you how it works. Actually, I mean, how it works during insertion and deletions of nodes. Uh, but you can plainly see how it works when we need some nodes. Some, uh, for example, we need node G. And uh, how, how, do we, how it is going to work? 
uh, here the top node, node is D. G is bigger than D. So we are going to, to shift right here, right? So this, uh, all this branch is irrelevant for us. A G is not here. It must be somewhere here. Okay, the next dot is F. Okay, G is bigger than F, so we are going here. And this one is irrelevant. The G is not here. Oh, here it is. Here is uh, what we are looking for. If, uh, for example, we were looking for something in between F and G, F, F and G, uh, we would also stop at this point and we uh, told uh, the user that, okay, uh, the floor value is F, the ceiling value is G. Uh, there is no something in between, but uh, at least we found it and we found it at short time and logarithmic time, uh, because uh, uh, when we uh, put twice as much elements in this tree, twice as much elements in this tree, uh, it will be only one layer deeper tree. See, here we have uh, three layers and uh, uh, the, this layer is not filled actually. So we can put a lots, lots, lots of elements here and still it will be just only three, uh, the three of three levels. And uh, if we add another fourth level, then we here there will be room for twice as much elements. So this is why it's going to work in logarithmic time. And uh, uh, the problem with the uh, with, uh, binary tree, as you, uh, you Vlad already mentioned, is that if we are adding elements in wrong direction, in, in wrong uh, order, then it can be uh, just converted to linked list or bamboo, as, as they told me. You, you know, bamboo is just one, one trunk a long, very long trunk. And uh, here you can use, uh, you can obtain, if you obtain only one branch or one, one bamboo trunk here, <clears throat> it won't be effective because uh, you will need big O of N time to search elements, not big O of uh, uh, logarithm N time. And that's why we have all these red and black tricks because uh, this is needed to balance the tree. And uh, balancing is, an, quite complicated algorithm if we are adding something to the tree. And if, uh, if we see that this tree isn't balanced uh, in a way that uh, we're having long trunk, long branch, one of its branches be begins to, to be uh, too long, it's going to, to restructure the tree so it will begin, became more balanced. And this is why we need this red and black it's just sort of metadata. But uh, the output, uh, the conclusion is that uh, in uh, red black tree can balance itself in logarithmic time. So when we, we are adding something or deleting something from the tree, we are using, log we can do this in logarithmic time. If we are retrieving something, we can retrieve it and still retrieve it in logarithmic time using uh, red black tree. So, uh, when comparing uh, tree map and hash map, and uh, also this is very important to understand, when should I use tree map? When should I use uh, hash map? Both of them are maps. So the answer is simple. If you just need map, if you just need a dictionary, if you don't want to, to find the values approximately, then use hash map because it will consume less memory. It's array based, no memory overhead, right? It works faster at constant time. But when you have more complex task, more tricky task, when you don't know exact key values, you just know approximate key values, but still you need this uh, fast dictionary, you should use tree map, which works in logarithmic times, which is fast, which is not that fast as a uh, uh, constant time, but it's still pretty fast. Uh, and you will have, of course, uh, memory overhead here because all this stuff resembles, uh, remind, must remind you uh, linked list. So here we go, cache misses, data is not local. We, we have uh, lots of memory overhead and uh, all the things that make it uh, less effective than array-based array -based, uh, data structures like uh, hash map. All right, what else do we have here? What else do we have here? Uh, Java. 
Uh, so sets are actually a uh, uh, hash set is actually a hash map with uh, with no values, and so with linked hash set and tree set. There are also bitmap based sets uh, when you have to to store uh, some integer value associated with uh, uh, with just true or false, like uh, number fifty is true; it belongs to some set. Number forty nine is false; it doesn't belong to some set. So, uh, for for this case, to to store set to to boolean, we can uh, use a more effective uh, a more effective data structure called a bit set, and also. Uh, we have set of enum values. Uh, so you already know what enums in Java are. Enums are quite powerful feature. And sometimes you need to, to have a set of enums like this, this, and this, but not that. So in order to store a set of enums, you should use uh, enum set uh, standard class from Java library because it's going to, to be more effective uh, uh, than just standard hash set. Uh, for this task, although it hash set will compile, although hash set will work, but enum set will work much faster for, for enums. All right. Uh, we also have algorithm, standard algorithm in Java library for sorting and shuffling things. And uh, uh, here is where our comparator, our uh, comparable interfaces uh, are going to work. Uh, if we have, uh, say, a list of uh, something, we can use uh, collections.sort method, and it will work if uh, the type parameter of list here implements comparable. In our case, string implements comparable of string, so we can use collection.sort, and this code will compile and work for us. So it will just sort the strings in alphabetical order in a time uh, uh, which is equals to big O of n times logarithm n. This is just well known, well known mathematical result from from this theory of algorithm, which is which is worse than plain logarithmic time, but which is just bearable. It's even worse than a big O of n, but it's bearable, but it's better than big O of n squared. Okay, so uh, this will work because a string implements comparable. Uh, but uh, if we pass some, uh, if say employee class doesn't implement comparable interface, we can pass compa comparator here. And uh, this is an object that we uh, build here. And we build this object using some strange syntax that you don't know yet. This is method reference. And I'm going to explain you method reference on the next lesson. But here, you just understand that you just uh, substitute some uh, object that is able to compare your employees. And here we go. Uh, this uh, collection sort is, is uh, will compare uh, we will sort uh, elements of your collection. And sometimes we need to shuffle. I've already shown you this, like in my blackjack example. So we have deck of cards and we need to just shuffle it. So we can shuffle it randomly using collection shuffle. The same for arrays. Arrays can be sorted using comparable, using comparator. For some strange reason, I don't know for, for what, but for some strange reason, there is no arrays.shuffle uh, method, but we have what we have. And we also have binary search. If uh, something is uh, uh, something is sorted lexicography, lexicographically, uh, then we can uh, make search of element of it, not uh, using just a sequential search. Just look at this or not. This is not what we are looking for. The next and next and next. Uh, sequential search has a big O of n complexity. Uh, we can use binary search like we do, like uh, in, I don't know, in uh, 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 paper encyclopedia, you know, articles are sorted in lexicographical order and you, you need a, a, 
I don't know, uh, uh, an article on Java. What is Java Island? And so you're, you're taking this encyclopedia and you are just open it somewhere where J letter should occur, right? So this is binary. This is uh, basically what binary search is. It just uh, selects uh, uh, the place where uh, the range where search item should occur. So binary search is uh, more quicker. It is it, quicker. So uh, it's just works in log logarithmic time and you can use a, a binary search method of collections and binary search method of arrays to uh, search for elements and items. And also uh, already implemented many algorithms uh, like a minimum search of minimum and maximum element, copying, reversing, union and difference. And uh, uh, why I'm talking it about it, because you should not implement it, uh, all these algorithms by yourself. Also, you will certainly have maybe some. It's good practice to to write your own algorithm finding for maximum element, for example, or your own implementation of sorting. But uh, it's already there. It's already there in uh, Java standard library, and most of it, this stuff is located in collections. Uh, utility class and arrays utility class. So please remember collections and arrays are your friends in Java. So many, many useful stuff uh, are there in these classes. So uh, this is all about, <laughs> about uh, collection API. So we, uh, we managed to cover generics and collection APIs stuff we uh, just uh, hadn't time to cover co uh, lambdas and method references but this is very very important so i will uh, i will tell you about this in person okay uh so i'm looking forward for to seeing you all in person next week in tallinn 